What do you see in front of you? Mushrooms. Bungi and mushrooms. Lots and lots and lots of them. All of these um, have been collected by the group of people who've come here to study your fungi in your forests. Do you know whether fungi are closer, do you think they're, they're a bit closely related to plants or a bit closely related to animals? Fungi are completely separate from plants and animals and they're more closely related to animals than they are to plants. Wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Strange, right. isn't it? So where do you think fungi mostly grow? Trees. They sometimes grow on trees. They sometimes grow in the ground, in the soil, that's right. The fungi are in the soil and in the wood feeding. And when they're feeding, they are feeding as very, very tiny threads. These tiny threads are in the wood and in the soil. And, but sometimes they produce something else. They produce a mushroom or they produce a bracket, a shelf, or they produce a puffball. Fungi produce a, what we call a fruit body. And inside the fruit body is, what do you think fungi seeds. use, not seeds, what do fungi use to spread? They don't have seeds, they have something a bit like seeds. Spores, spores that's right. How do you think spores move? By the way. By the wind, that's right, because the spores are so small and so light that they can carry by the wind. Now, you don't often hear about fungi on the news, but right now, there's a lot of news. Do you know about this? Yeah, these fungi here, we want all these because these are our native fungi. These are mostly the ones that belong here. But if we get a fungus that doesn't belong here and it comes in from another country, we could have problems. So right now in Kerikeri, Keri, we have a big problem. And the big problem is because a certain fungus that has been in Australia has come across on the wind and it's landed its spores in different parts probably of New Zealand. But at first it's been found in Kerikeri. Keri. And this fungus causes a disease. So does anyone know what kind of plant myrtle rust Infects? Feed yours, yeah. um, Hutukawa. Oh. For Hutukawa, Rata, Manuka, Kanuka. Mm. These are very important native trees that we think might be affected by this fungus. So we're doing everything we can to try to control it and stop it spreading. Do you know that if you get I'm trying to find the fungus. Um, <coughs> many of the fungi that are out there now, if you can go down, if you see a, a mushroom on the forest floor, say in under Manuka or Kanuka, if you can dig down very carefully under the mushroom, do you know what you will come to? The roots. The roots. That's dead right. The roots of the Manuka and Kanuka. That's a great answer. Because... <coughs> Fungi and roots of the plant are working together. And they've done so for millions of years. This is the normal situation. And those fungal threads bring in water and minerals to the root, and they give some of that to the plant. And so they were searching for the food for the plant. Well, the, the fungus is searching for food for itself, and some of that goes to the plant. And without the tree, the fungus wouldn't be able to grow as well either. So they work together. And almost all plants have fungi with their roots, doing that really important job of bringing in water, bringing in minerals for the plant. Now another important function of fungi, if you see a, 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 a log on the ground, what's happening to it? It's rotting. It's rotting. How, why do things rot? Why do they just stay there? Like, um, turn into Hmm? They basically do. They rot. They, they do rot from you, a, a tree falls, and it's a, a very strong, you know, big trunk of, of, of wood, and it eventually rots and it goes into the soil. And how does that process happen? The fungi grow in it all over, and suddenly this dead tree is alive with fungi, and it's alive with insects. Things only rot because fungi feed on them. 
If there were no fungi, they wouldn't rot. By things rotting, all of the nutrients go into the soil. And that then means that plants can grow with those nutrients. And as well as that, fungi can be very useful for food. Has anyone seen this one? So this one, it's called the ear fungus, or hakika, and it's a bit like an ear. It's very much like an ear. And it's kind of, mm, it's got a little bit of a crunch. When you eat it, it's got a little bit of a crunch. It doesn't have much flavour, but you can eat it with egg, or with vegetables, and all sorts of things. It's really nice. Another one that was eaten was this one. Has anyone seen that? No. It's called Kopura fetu. And is that a mushroom? It is a kind of mushroom. We call, we use the word mushroom for lots of different kinds of things. Not, I mean, the typical, the typical mushroom has a stalk and a cap. But mushroom is a, is a general term for anything that's kind of large and a fruiting structure. Because there's another, there's another word that's sometimes used, and my family, I have to educate my children, we call it the T word. Do you know what the T word is? It's an awful word, and I don't allow my children to say it ever. It's the word toadstool. Have you heard of the word toadstool? I think it's a very bad word. Because toadstool actually means a poisonous mushroom. And toadstools are not very good because you don't want to eat poisonous things. But people get scared of fungi because they use the word toadstool and they think lots and lots of fungi are poisonous. Some are, aren't they? Some mushrooms are poisonous, or you call, might call it toadstools are poisonous. But many of them, well, they may or may not be poisonous, some are edible, of course. But the thing is, you never put something in your mouth unless you know it's edible. So never, never risk putting a plant, an animal, or a fungus, or a mushroom in your mouth unless you know it's edible. And then you won't have any trouble with poisonous fungi, of which there are some. This is not poisonous. This is edible. And this is, a copra fetu is called in English the basket fungus. And this comes out of, a, of an egg-like structure. So it's growing in the ground, or it's growing on mulch, or something like that, but plant matter in the ground. And what do you think this might smell like? You think it smells good or bad? Bad. Bad. You're right. It smells really bad. Rotten eggs, uh, rotten meat. What do you think would come to it? Insects, yeah. Particularly flies. And why do you think this fungus needs flies to come to it? Oh, it doesn't eat the flies. The flies eat stuff off. Yep, the flies do eat stuff off that and they get it on their bodies, on their wings, and they take it with them. And that's how it spreads. So this fungus doesn't spread by wind, its spores are spread by the flies. And these are called stink horn fungi because they stink. And often you, you smell it with your nose before you see it with your eyes. So if you find, if there's a bad smell around and you can't identify it, it might be these. And look on the ground and see if you can find these, because this time of year is when they will be out there. But this fungus, before it gets to this stage, was eaten. Traditionally by Māori, it was eaten. And it was eaten in the egg stage, the young stage. So this is a really quite interesting fungus that was an edible species. Uh, well, has anyone seen a $50 banknote? The New Zealand $50 banknote has a mushroom on it, and it's the only banknote in the world with a mushroom on it. I can pass this around and you can see. Why was that much? Why was the mushroom put Why was the mushroom put on the $50 banknote? Okay, it was there because of a Maori story. The Maori story was from Tuhoi Iwi. And the Tuhoi Iwi story is that the kakaka bird, do you know the kakaka bird? It's a grey bird and it's got a so-called wattle on its cheek. Do you know what colour that wattle is? Blue. Yeah, it's blue, isn't it? It's a bright blue. The North Island kakaka has a bright blue wattle on its cheek. And the Tuhoi story is, where do you think the, 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 the kakaka gets the wattle colour from? It gets it from the mushroom. It rubs its cheek against the mushroom to get the blue colour. 
That's the story. Like, I guess it doesn't happen. Like dyeing your hair. It's like dyeing your hair. Why not? Yes. Because the blue mushroom is so amazing. The, the colour of it is so vividly blue. And it matches the colour of the kakaka bird. Hey, but let's talk about the puffballs. Does anyone, do people know much about puffballs? Yep. Yeah, why do you think they're called puffballs? You get a puff, don't you? When you puff them, what you see is, a, is, is not dust, it's actually spores. Thousands and thousands of spores getting puffed into the air. And that's how a puffball works. And what do you think normally, apart from people standing on them, what do you think normally gets the spores out of the puffball into the air? Because that's what it needs to do, so it can spread the spores around. Something quite common that would actually cause the, the spores to puff out of a puffball. Rain. Yes, rain. Absolutely. You get a water droplet on here, it just, it just dents that and out shoot the spores. And I hadn't seen it until recently, but we were in the forest one day recently and it was raining. And I don't always like being in the forest when it's raining, but this particular day, the forest had lots of puffballs. And we saw these raindrops hit the puffball and we saw the puff come out each time. So this needs to grow a little bit more and it won't grow now, but you can touch it. It's, you can feel how soft it is. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. If it, that's another puffball, a little bit bigger, but it's also not mature yet. It's a bit like, a bit like um, sort of sponge rubber, isn't it? Yeah, it was a light so it's a fungus with golden rice. Why is everyone like pushing the rice? They can go back on that one. Yeah, that's like the rice. Well, I'll just get a few times. That's right, yes. And do you know how many fungi we, we've recorded in New Zealand? Seven thousand fungi, different kinds of fungi in New Zealand. We expect there to be about another fifteen thousand different kinds of fungi that we haven't even found yet.